And it didn't take long for him to say, well, well Jesus was just a man. You, you don't think the apostles believed that Jesus was God, do you? Yes, actually, I do. Yeah, I've defended that many times. And their writings are really unequivocal on that subject. Um, I submit to you evidence of Peter, Acts 2, 22. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. It's talking to you. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, a man, attested to you by God with, de with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you as you yourselves know. This man, now hallelujah, now hallelujah, I praise God for what God did through Jesus. That's exactly what that Peter said. he was a prophet. Peter did not believe. This is the first sermon to Israel in the book of Acts. If Peter believed what you said, he should have said, praise God Jesus, because Jesus our God. God, he, God just did these stuff. He doesn't say that. Jesus was a man just through him, whom teacher. God made. So you are blaspheming the name of yes. Jesus by attributing to him God, his unique power. God works through Jesus. God works through Muhammad. God works through Moses. God works through all the prophets. In Acts 2.22, here is Peter speaking to an audience of Jews, to an audience of Jews, and many of them were antagonistic. And notice what Peter said. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man, now get this, a man attested to you by God. Do you see? Up until then it was attested to us, to us, we saw, we heard. Now, He's throwing it back on their lap and said, attested to you and to you and to you by God with miracles, wonders, and signs, which could be confirmed by the five senses. Now notice what he says, which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know. The, the passage is quite clear in Acts that Jesus was a man through whom God worked. how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now you look at verse 38 here, I want you to think about a trinity, I want you to think about a deity of Christ, and I want you to see quite clearly that Peter didn't believe in either one of those doctrines. Peter's very clear. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Not for he was God. That's not what it says. It says, for God was with him. We know that the doctrine of the Trinity took a couple of hundred years to develop. Uh, Christians got together in the Council of Nicaea in the year 325, and at that time they ruled that uh, Jesus is very God of very God. And they said, we also believe in the Holy Spirit, but they did not say anything about the Holy Spirit being God or that the Holy Spirit should be worshipped. They had to come back uh, in the Council of Constantinople in 381, and that is when they ruled that the Holy Spirit should also be worshipped along with God the Father and the Son. There's always a certain um, silence about, or reticence about the Spirit um, until the 4th century. No one quite knows where the Holy Spirit fits in. Obviously on the one hand there are these, there is a baptismal formula and there is this blessing at the end of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians which names the Spirit along with the other two. But there isn't the kind of evidence in the New Testament itself for the distinct personality of the Spirit that you find in the case of the Father and the Son and there isn't the same evidence of the Spirit being called God. So it took more time for the Spirit to attain that divine rank in the eyes of Christians 
uh, than it did for the sun to attain that rank. And in fact, even now, in what we call the Nicene Creed, not the Nicene Creed of 325, but the one that was amplified and proclaimed at the Council of Constantinople in 381, that's the one that we now recite in churches, and it doesn't actually say that the Spirit is God. It says that the Spirit is the Lord and the giver of life, and that he's worshipped with the Father and the Son. But it seems that the Church never actually produced a creedal formula which definitely said that the Spirit was God like the other two. So that shows the development in the doctrine. If you go back even earlier to the Apostles' Creed, which is from the second century, it doesn't even say the Son is to be worshipped. So now we have three creeds, the Apostles' Creed, second century, uh, Council of Nicaea, early fourth century, uh, Council of Constantinople, late uh, fourth century. So if you see the development, only one God here, Apostles' Creed, second century, only the Father is God. Second uh, uh, of these we have in the Council of Nicaea for early 4th century, now the Son is also God. Now we have two. Uh, later in that century, Constantinople, now the Holy Spirit is also God, now we have three. So it goes from one to two to three. It goes from Unitarian to Binitarian to Trinitarian. And uh, still, I say Trinitarian with some qualification because the idea that the, how these three can still be one, that this took more time to be worked out. That does not mean that some of the earlier church fathers did not have some inkling of this. Yes, there is development. I've already seen, I've shown that this development started even with the Gospel according to John and even before the Gospel according to John.